Okay. okay, the Catamount Community Forest Committee meeting, I'll call us to order at 532 on August 10th. Um, do, I, do we need to say who's in attendance? Terry, Reed, Hans, John, and Simon. Um, and our first order of business is any public comments? Uh, we've got no, no public on Zoom or in the meeting. Mm -hmm. uh, so we can move on from that. And our next order of business, we're three minutes ahead of time. Look how good I am. <laughs> Approval of minutes of July 13th uh, meeting. Yeah, I'll just bring them up. Okay. So I think the only thing I saw was, and of course I wasn't, I got kicked off because of the storm that day. Oh, right. But yeah, that was last month. It was um, under future agenda. The invasive should be that says weekly, but should it be monthly or does that? Uh, yeah, that would be right. Monthly. Monthly, yeah. And uh, probably since I wasn't here for all of it, <clears throat> I can't. I, I, I think you can vote. Oh, okay. If you like. Um, you're here for a lot, long enough. And I think you watched, you watched the video anyway. Yeah. Um, so you're fully entitled to vote. Great. Mm, so do, do you want to scroll through it or is everybody yeah, happy with that? All right. It, it, would anybody like to make a motion? I'll make a motion to approve the minutes as amended. I'll second that motion. Okay. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed? None. All abstained? None. The minutes from July 13th are now approved. Uh, and then next is the forestry project update. I guess Ethan emailed along an update. He's not joining us in person. Uh, yeah, we weren't able to make it, but I think I think the committee members who are here um, actually have a pretty good idea of where things stand. Um, but we did probably know we appointed LaFoe's based on this committee's recommendation. Um, so I guess they're planning to start September 1st if it ever stops raining. Um, <laughs> So we've got them under contract and Ethan's also uh, contracted to manage it on our behalf. So he signed a contract with the town uh, to represent us and uh, manage the logger. Um, so we had a good walk with Sam from the foes a couple of weeks ago, but I think, I think everyone bar Terry was at, um, uh, talked about how we're gonna go about doing this. Um, uh, a few action items came about out of, out of that. So we've got the, the logging truck uh, needs to go through the parking lot. So managing that. Um, I've got some cones, which I have ordered um, and should be arriving shortly to help us manage that parking lot. Uh, and I've also got to develop some signs uh, just to brief people on the restrictions. Um, I think I thought that the walk with Sam and Nathan went fairly well. Um, they seem to have some good ideas about how to uh, go about doing the project and checking the trails. Um, I, don't, I don't know if I've got anyone else who's there for about that. Or... I thought it went well. Yeah. I mean, it was really an introduction for me to see how they were going to cut trails through yeah. those wooded areas and, and try and stay off of the recreational ones as much as they could. So that was good. It's <coughs> great that they have experience with other biking areas. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Katie Hill and yeah. tracks. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I thought, I mean, it's just on a personal, right? I, I thought Stan was a delightful fellow and just <coughs> having the chance to walk in the woods and gear and talk about what he does to me was a treat. 
Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't have any concerns about what they talked about or discussed. The one thing I do remember was uh, I had asked about the um, documenting. Yeah. And you said, like, probably you and Ethan would walk the trails with a uh, GoPro. I just want to make sure. Yeah, so we're planning on doing that, uh, I think, the week before it's scheduled to start. I'm right. sure we get them uh, just before. So I've been working Andrew in our office. He sits on the front desk. Uh -huh. Uh, it's going to help me uh, with Ethan. Any, anyone else who wants to attend is more than welcome to attend. Uh, so just going out, recording the trails, um, probably going to divide them into trail segments so we don't end up with like one two, three hour long video yeah. to, um, <laughs> we have to plow through. Um, so hopefully, you know, if we do spot a problem, um, we should be able to find uh, where it is on the video fairly quickly. Um, Andrew and I actually did a test up Five Tree Hill to figure out. So we think we've got the frame rate and the resolution uh, sorted out um, to do that. So we were going to meet Ethan on August 24th uh, to, to have a go at it uh, and then probably follow up. Um, Andrew and I will do some uh, recording. Um, a later date. Um, so I don't, if anyone's interested to join there, they're more than welcome. Um, so do you, you walk? You're not riding a bike? Uh, I think walk, walking's better because it's slower. Yeah. It's easier to control the camera. And <laughs> I think there's going to be some places like where we need to stop. And, you know, if we're going over a bridge, we need to stop and look at that bridge properly rather than just riding over it. Um, so I think walking it is going to be uh, the best way of doing it. So are you wearing a bike helmet with a uh, thing on your head, or how does that work? I don't know. Uh, Angie's got a um, a stick to hold oh, it yeah. with. Yep. Um, so I think we've just been figuring out to make sure we uh, label each file correctly, and then mm -hmm. uh, we can also put it in a um, OneDrive folder so anyone who wants to look at the videos can be. Can you narrate? Can you talk and have that on uh, as well? You can, yeah. I mean, the way we, we did think about like saying this is the start of the whatever trail. Um, so we might do that. We might also have like just a piece of paper that says, you know, that's what this is, you know, the start of yeah. Gremlins or whatever, you know, heading north. Um, just so it's easy to, to recognize um, where they are. So I've always, I've just seen GoPro and they, people put music to it. Yeah. You know, they, <laughs> Yeah, so it's usually just a kind of fun thing. So, um, August twenty fourth, you meet with Ethan to like do the recordings, uh, or just well, like, we're gonna. The idea is we give it a go, see how it goes, and we're gonna do. I mean, I think this is gonna take more than one. Uh -huh. visit. So that's like the first, the first yeah. outing. Let's walk yeah. here, video it, see yeah. how it goes, and then Thanks. send Andrew back. Yeah, to make sure we're happy with the product. Um, then we're going to have to watch some of the videos to make sure they do actually show what we need them to show. Yeah. Um, so I'm envisaging this being, you know, at least two or three trips up there uh, to make sure it's done. Uh -huh. um, and uh, John, it, it would be up to you if you want uh, to send Andy out or be involved or how the Outdoor Family Center wants to be involved with that maybe look at the videos you know just so it's not like you know oh all the trees got cut down how are those videos looking oops we didn't look at them before do you do you want some involvement how do you want to be involved in that uh remind what day of the week is the 24th I don't have my calendar right in front of me it's uh, Thursday. Thursday Thursday um, so Andy is typically not in, so it would be me and, and, uh, I'm happy to, to join you all. Yeah. I mean, we're going to, I, we're going to do it on more than one day. So if, if Andy, I don't know, if Mandy particularly wants to attend, we can schedule the next walk for when he is here. Uh, I mean, maybe okay. there are some trails you're particularly interested in being there for the recording and we can do those trails on the day either you or Andy or Andy are both there, I don't know. That's of interest. Um, I mean, I, I think we're interested in all of them, but um, yeah. you know, I, I, I uh, if you're going to go multiple days and we can involve uh, both Andy and I, that would be great because yeah. then we 
because then we're both uh, both have eyes on it. Okay. Yeah, and I guess the key is, uh, I mean, I think you'll find all the trails, uh, but but that would be kind of just for John for you to reconcile, like, okay, we got all the trails, or oh wait, we forgot about cow path, like that silly trail. I don't even. I think that's in the logging area. Yeah, so we've got a spreadsheet showing all the trails, okay. and Andrew's broken it down by segment. Uh, so I can send that to you, John. Oh, that's look at. Yeah. Um, just to give us like the board structure of how we're going to do it. Nice. I can't wait to see if it'll still be muddy. <laughs> yeah. Um, thank goodness it's sandy over there. I mean, it's good soils. Yeah. It's not a good thing. But There's some place. It's got to stop raining someday. <laughs> Okay, good. Uh, that was my only question about the, or my only thing that I had a question about for follow up from that meeting with Stan. Yep. What else on that? Uh, uh, so I like think it, someone at some point in the past on his committee requested some FAQs um, if they get questions about it. So Ethan and I worked on some uh, that were linked in the agenda. I was quite impressed. Windows, okay. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, very well done. Yeah, so, this is great. Yeah. So hopefully, I guess it's quite long, it's four pages on three, but um, hopefully right. that but summarizes. Um, I don't know if there's any obvious questions we've missed on there or mm -hmm. anything else we can add to it. Because there has been only two people during this process that have, have shown concern about this project. So, I think this is good to be able to produce to someone if yeah. they do have questions. And I had a question on, and I know I saw it worded differently. I guess it was on the webpage. I was just looking at the, the community forest um, website. It says, you know, what's going to happen on these trails? And it says that the select board made the choice. And I guess in the end they did. Yeah. Did they ever know about the other options or? We, uh, we it, I think it was included in the memo that we did have. Right. It was a choice of three. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And, and they ultimately. And then I just saw, there, then there was, uh, why are we cutting down trees in a climate emergency? And I just haven't heard emergency, but it's uh, it's the same idea. Yeah. It's a crisis or whatever. Uh, like some people still use the term global warming. It's sure. really something we've moved away from. Right. Um, right. And I know Ethan uses another uses another one about global something he's talked about in his meetings. And I just saw one typo way uh, in that paragraph. Why are we cutting the trees down? The second yeah. paragraph it just says peoples. It says um, harm the ecosystem and peoples globally. Okay. I think probably. Did you mean to say people? Probably. Yeah. 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 I mean, it's just. Somebody would pick that up, see it, and say, oh. <laughs> but no, I thought that's this what they're great. complaining about. Them, that's good. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> Although it is interesting. I mean, the editorial, like to the extent that the town chooses to use the word climate emergency, you obviously are, you know, agreeing with that word that there is a climate emergency. Oh, there Williston. is. Look at it outside. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm not saying right there now. is or isn't. I'm just saying, like, the town is. Just by using that wording. Yeah, it's so we've, we've appointed an energy committee and we've got an energy plan. So I think we are, we've acknowledged the existence of climate okay. change. Okay. Yeah. And this whole project is is about climate change. So I thought it was about birds and adaptive forests. And, no, no, it's all the, about where it's a adaptive silviculture, isn't it? Yeah. Like healthy With forest. UVM, yeah. it's Which whole, fits into. We want a healthy yeah. forest. I didn't know that it was that linked to climate change. Oh yeah, you know the whole the whole project is based on this work with UVM, this collaboration right, with UVM. But I think it's primarily for healthy forests with diversity that are resilient for in the context of perhaps we climate change, but right. it's not going to help fix climate change. So no. I think the idea is that so. um, like a healthy forest. As diversity of tree species, as diversity of wildlife, and that makes it more resilient to the climate changing climate. So, uh -huh. as our climate changes, we might get different bugs or diseases. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, and then so, you know, your whole forest. Yeah, your, your whole forest doesn't go. I see. Um, or, you know, we might have, you know, different trees are resistant to different blowdowns. So, 
yeah. we have more storms. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we're not going to lose all our trees in one go. Uh, so I think it's mm -hmm. those sort of things. Uh, and I think there's some sort of discussion I'm not fully aware of that when trees, when forests are growing in their young age is when they pull most carbon out of the air. Yeah. Uh, and when they're mature is when they store most carbon. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I think we learn something um, from that as well. And like, so that area is pretty heavily yeah. populated with white pine. So if some disease came through with white yeah. pine, you would, the landscape would look a lot different over there if they were all gone. So. Good. All right. That's helpful. Thank you. Uh, thank you for doing the FAQs. I thought, um, like, we want them to get used if the town wanted to, like, print and laminate them. Like, we could probably well, staple them up on the, on the, I mean, I'm volunteering on. John if he's running. But we haven't had that huge barn. Yeah. There's plenty of space to staple stuff up. Like, this is nice work. Like yeah. if it's printed and laminated. I was thinking we could, we could do that and also have a um, like a, a QR code on it um, mm -hmm. so that people can go through to the electronic version and then they can click like Ethan's links to Ethan's YouTube videos yeah. or, or you know, whatever, have a record of it on their phone. Yeah. Because no one wants to manually type in that YouTube link. Right. I see it at the bottom there. Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah, that might, be, yeah. that might be good. Is that something the town could do? Yeah, well, we can laminate them and, and put them up. Okay. And John, is that okay? Yeah, of course. That's like our kiosk, I guess, is what the town decided, or the committee decided instead of putting up a kiosk to use the barn as like yeah. a, for notices and information and stuff like that too. right so that's good. yeah if we had a real kiosk we'd put this up on right on a kiosk you know, on the yeah. on the you know yeah. special information section but the barn offers at least the barn is a huge kiosk. <laughs> right, right yeah lots of information to get put on there so is is this something because ethan has been publishing practically weekly mm -hmm. articles mm -hmm. either general or very specific to the catamount project uh trying to indoctrinate the populace about it. Is this something that is publishable as an article? Yeah, thank you. You know, um, yeah, uh, probably not so many of the pictures because they, the observer mm -hmm. would put out so many of them, but is that some an option to, you know, the project is about to start, here's some frequently asked questions, mm -hmm. you know, so. I mean, <laughs> If someone wants to contact the observer, that's great. I mean, there's a lot of text in there, so they yes. might need to. Um, yeah, and that is one thing. Those uh, articles run 500 to 1,000 words generally, so they have exceeded that. You know. and, yeah, yeah there's, there's a walk this weekend, so yeah. for fish and wildlife, and so yeah. yeah. It's yeah. just an idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's a new idea. I mean, he, we kept, I was giving an idea of how to blow it out to the public by posting it, laminating mm. it. You know, I think even if you any other idea of how to make use of it. When we, when you do good work, you want people to yeah, like benefit it. from it and mm -hmm. not have it stuck on a computer somewhere. So is there a way to make this a link? Sort of. Uh so that's linked um to the whole page, right? Yeah, so we've got a um our, our website's terrible. So we <laughs> use Bitly to um create uh short links and generate QR codes. So I can I can put those on an extra page and put it up with these. We can put them up on the um website. So so maybe then from a, the observer perspective, don't put an article, but get a box ad with a, you know the Catamount Forest project is coming very shortly and have a QR code in the corner. <laughs> I think their article in the observer a couple of weeks ago where <laughs> that was I mean that covered the project pretty well. I mean, but was... if you you want people to continually understand mm. it, you know, if we're sure. going to create these FAQs to get them in front of people. Yeah, sure. you know. no, we could. I mean, there's probably that that would probably cost something to do a little. Yeah, yeah. So I don't think I we did it from my pond. I think it was about just over a hundred dollars or something, mm. and putting that in. So we can do that. Seems like a good mm -hmm. news. Mm -hmm. easier than 
asking the observer to take this whole thing and boil it down to you know a right. whole page right. or two pages. I guess ultimately whether they want to do that is their choice, but it's yeah, it's our choice to purchase and add. True. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. So we could do both, laminate this and put it on the yeah. barn and because not everybody goes there. So and yeah, front porch form. If, if the observer wants to make it an article, you can let them put it in. Then it's free. Otherwise, go for an app. That works. Has okay. Jason Starr interviewed you or anybody else about the project? He's the editor. Uh, I think he interviewed John, uh, and I think he's interviewed um, Ethan. It's okay. been in there a few times. Yeah, I know. It's been, Ethan writes a lot of articles. Yeah, and as well, just the whole. Yeah. yeah. And forest management was front page, I think. Okay. Yeah. And he's, I think Jason watches the meetings, right? And he picks up topics. And oh, this is. Yes. Hi, yeah. yeah. Jason. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I think he, he okay. can't get to every meeting, but he can watch the Zoom thing. Yeah. Okay. Um, good on the FAQs. Uh, that was part of our forestry project update. Is that it for that agenda uh, item? Notes. Um, I think so. Yeah. So we're just wait, waiting on the weather. Um, yeah. As we look outside, right <laughs> on the downpour. Wonderful. Okay. So let's move on then. There's nothing to vote on or anything there. So uh, the ARPA fund suggestions. Yeah. So maybe this is a what ideas people have now. Yeah. Or? So. Eric Wells just emailed me to say that for, for ARPA, we've got $1.8 million um, left to spend out of the town's allocation. Um, it looks like it's pretty wide ranging what you can spend it on. You can spend it on sort of uh, capital projects or general fund operations, uh, things like that. I think they've used it to fund the um, community center outreach project that's been going on. Um, I think they've invested some money in the police station. Uh, I think they bought gear for the fire department. Uh, I think there's other things that are funded with it. Like I think we might be doing EV charges at some point. Yes, um, we have some plans for those. Yeah, which is coming via ARPA. Um, so I think they now, the select board wants to decide over the next year how to spend the rest of the money. Um, it's obviously quite a lot of money. Um, so Eric's doing uh, a sort of roadshow where he's going to various events like at the library, um, Adams and some other places uh, to solicit community feedback about what ideas people have. Um, and he also wants the board's feedback. So I think the idea is that if we can get together some suggestions, uh, then maybe me and someone on the committee can work together to get a, um, a memo together and we can send it across uh, to Eric and he can include it in his uh, report to the select board. Okay. And so now we can, do we want to brainstorm a little bit and then you tell us if it seems in right in bounds well, or not? I think looking at what like, we've spent money on so far, I think it doesn't look like much is out of Oh, all right. Out, out of um, off limits, and I think I think we ought to come up with our ideas and um, pass them on. Um, you know, we're one board among, amongst many, but um, mm -hmm. we should definitely uh, vocalize what we think. And we have source two, of funds th this month and next month to produce a list. Right? Uh, yeah, so I think um, Eric would prefer it if we did because our. Our next meeting is a little late in the day to be giving in the fresh mm -hmm. memo. So mm -hmm. I think we'd want a, at least an advanced draft uh, for them. Um, but, you know, we'll always have opportunity to clarify if we want. Right. And plus, he's having all these open meetings yeah. in the pub, in the town. So, yeah. Um, maybe I'll just quick read my list that I brainstormed. Um, I mean, I thought we always are looking for more money on invasive treatments. Uh, so that's one. Two, I thought a trail modernization project. I know the Outdoor Family Center has ownership of maintenance of trails, but you know, if we wanted to bring trails up to standards of like what you see at Cochran's or other uh, mountain bike networks, 
money to like have a purpose built mountain bike trail. I mean, most everything out there is where you can ride. It's not real purpose mountain bike built. So that's one idea. Visitor counter. So uh, people that like walk through, I don't know, little electronic trail things. Counter, so, yeah. yeah, like a, yeah. a, a trail counter, uh, a couple of those maybe. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, those are smaller dollars. Like I hope, I hope he's not only looking for like huge stuff, like some of the smaller stuff too. Um, I, you know, I wrote down parking lot improvements. Like, do we want a fresh load of gravel and chuck it down so it's not so muddy all the time? And in the winter, I mean, I know we have to consider plowing. You don't want to plow away your gravel. Mm -hmm. I don't have a gravel driveway. I don't know how that works. I don't know, but uh, I know there's a big rock in that <laughs> that parking lot. There's a huge rock. So like an outcropping? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't know how to plow. He must just know it's there. <laughs> uh, so parking lot. There's no there. Hmm? What's that? I, I just said that uh, he does know the rock is there, and uh, we we right. we could put something down that I mean every driveway gets plowed in the you know if in the state so there's there are, there are types of gravel that we could put down that would be that would stay you know longer mm -hmm. than uh, it's small smaller uh, smaller size gravel um, tends to get picked up less uh, the bigger stuff is easier to pop up so um, mm -hmm. it tends to get caught up. But yeah, I mean, we, we, we certainly, uh, that's a good idea, Hans. It does need a little bit of love. And I, I think it's, it's coming up on its sort of due date for that too. I'm not sure when the last, when the last work was done. Um, and then, you know, that also advances the goal we said of like, keep the parking lot open. Um, it'll be less muddy and mud season. Yeah. Okay. And then, and then I don't know who owns this exactly, but I, I said, again, on parking lot, I was thinking parking lot. That our small barn, like if we moved it over to make the parking lot bigger, but I, I don't know, do I just outdoor family center own the barn? I guess we do as a temporary yeah. structure. Right. I think yeah, the outdoor center purchase. So, so the town probably wouldn't pay to move it. Yeah, <laughs> somewhere in the back of my head, I've got there's something about if we make the parking lot bigger, we trigger stormwater requirements. Um, well, I'm just saying move it off yeah. the parking lot. All right, okay. That's true. Um, it was, it was a parking lot before. So. so my my uh my understanding of it was that we were not allowed to put it on the land. It had to be in the parking lot. Uh -huh. So, but but that I, I am I'm coming in a lot later than all of you. So <laughs> don't take my word for it. But uh, but I, I you know that was that was how it was explained to me, and that's why it's in sort of in the parking lot now. Yeah, I wasn't in on that. It all, all of a sudden just appeared, really. I think I was, I don't know if I was on the committee or just attending meetings, but we were all like, what's that in the parking lot? <laughs> so, yeah. but it's very useful. <laughs> yeah, that was the COVID response plan. Oh, true, right. Because mm -hmm. you couldn't have people across the street inside for rentals. So customer service was moved mm -hmm. over to the hub and then the rentals are put in that barn. Yeah, seems to be working. Yeah. Pretty good though. Yeah. What if we talked last winter about you know obtaining snowshoes. I don't think they ever did. Oh right, right. Well so, there was a whole you know there's a whole thing about how to get them and yeah because you, you you rent skis now, right? So if we got said hey we'd like to get a, a an uh, in inventory of snowshoes, you know, and then for renting. Yeah, so I think where we ended up. We, have, we uh, have a full. We have a full rental fleet of snowshoes. Right. Yeah. Oh. So yeah. I think what came to All maybe, right. and yeah. Simon's going to speak to that, is the five dollar educational rental fee as opposed to twenty dollars for folks. Actually, is that? I think I think where we ended up is that the town can't manage their own separate parallel. Fleet of snowshoes, but an option might be if the town wants to like buy a package of right. vouchers or you know, however yeah. it works from the outdoor family center to say we would like to subsidize our residents who can't afford snowshoes to go out or get um, there without snowshoes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, ultimately, it's going to be very difficult to check whether someone meets the income requirements because we're yeah. just not going to do that. Uh, but that, yeah. that might be an option. Okay. 
Okay. Uh, yeah, there's loads of loads of suggestions there. Um, I mean, I'm I'm wondering whether there's like a so it feels like the to me it feels like the trails thing is like a big separate thing of its own, but there's like almost like a batch of catamount small projects that maybe just get banded together, like we'd like to do all these things, and you know, collectively they're not a new radio system for the fire department, but they do add up. Yeah, I mean, maybe we can add up to, I don't know what we aspire to add up to the spend of the 1.8 million. It'd be nice to get. Right. Yeah. 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 So I wrote down a few things. Yeah. And are you all done? No, I'm all done. Yes, okay. please. So invasives was one uh, treatment. And I know this year after the logging, we're going to use some stewardship fund, $3,000 to do some invasives. Um, one thing I think people are still getting lost out there are trail signs, wooden trail signs. Yeah, the wayfinder. The wayfinder or actual physical yeah. signs out there because I think, right. you know, just some of the signs are set back or, you know, just, just what could be a little bit better sign. So that could be. You and know, John, you had tried to get a grant for that and we didn't get it, I guess. That was... Where that ended uh, up. Not during my tenure, but there was one that was uh, applied for before I got in, um, and certainly um, we we still are are uh, want to do a, a comprehensive yeah. signage project. Things are updated. So, yeah, so yeah, yeah like that would be a good one. Um, Did you ever get like a um, like a budget for that? Like, because I remember seeing some of the signs. Um, I just wondered if you ever got a budget for that. Or... Uh, meaning like uh, uh, an estimate for yeah, what so it was. Like this is going to, I mean, 30,000 sticks out in my mind. Right. We had Jeremy Matoski, okay. uh, TCE engineering. Yeah. Like he, he donated the time to like design it and come up with like, he, he also did the current map that we have. Mm -hmm. And the current map has all of these numbers on the map, which are supposed to correspond to like, right. key, you know, you are here oh, sign. Yes. So right. You are here at point number eight, and that corresponds to what's on the trail map. Oh, okay. That is on the barn building today. Yeah, so that would be a good one to sign the project. And actually, that would be, that brings up another thing is that I'd say people still are getting lost out there, is to actually provide, you know, have a maps have maps to hand out to people <laughs> you know to navigate their way around the, the trails because i mean years ago i remember when i went there i did actually get a map i have have one at home um but it was nice you know and it was easy to use but that would be nice to you know have a stock of maps made to go along with the trails <laughs> the trail signage okay. yeah i think if the the sign project uh, and there's like, like that you are here, you know, sometimes they have places where you can pull maps out. Mm -hmm. Questions just stop them, yeah. Yeah, I don't I think it's I guess there's no limit. But what's the limit? Well, I guess there's no bottom limit for requests for our funds, but yeah, requesting some maps. So there's a tension of like, hey, do the electronic version versus paper or in that. Yeah, right. I know. Society. Yeah, not everybody has. Smartphones. I mean, most people do, but yeah. So it's like, yeah. And then the other thing I was just trying to think of is things for wildlife. Um, what projects could we do? Forest. Um, you know, there's a deer exclusion 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 area out there that Ethan, uh, the Fish and Wildlife, put out to do an experiment to see, you know, how the deer are affecting the mm -hmm. the area around it. Um, some people I've seen. Uh, bat boxes being put up and there's just been a big story recently about mm -hmm. the bats in Heinsburg that have come back and they're you know actually doing pretty well but there's a couple of places around that have put up bat boxes which attract the bats and they eat the bugs <laughs> so it's kind of a good thing but yeah just wild, like wildlife projects in general and maybe go on, I'm going to go on the walk with Andrea this weekend and um, maybe pick a, you know pick her brains of some little projects we could do for that. 
I like it. The wildlife. We need a um, live stream webcam mm -hmm. duck boxes. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, that would be nice. <laughs> Uh, you can monitor them from the comfort of your home. <laughs> we had a camera and we got 3,500 pictures of red wing black birds. Oh, like, oh. Oh. <laughs> because the, they're pretty prolific. The, yeah, they, uh, that was the box that the doctor didn't use. Oh. The red wings just came in from the swamp constantly. You did get an owl and a kingfisher. We got an owl and a kingfisher. Yes, right? yes. yes. But uh, so. yes, yeah, so we deleted all the red wing pictures. <laughs> Then you can get, but it's right inside the box. That's the yeah, those are the cool ones. Yes, yes. Get the little awesome. ones. Oh, okay, Terry, is that what you had? Yeah, that was okay. my ideas. Yeah, just read. Do you have any? Uh, dad, well, not dad. Yeah, not dad. No, um, I think the whole idea of the trail signs and trail yeah. counters, you know, we talked about before, mm -hmm. is very valuable. Um, I know I, I wander around through there, though, which trail am I on, you know, and so yeah. um, those would be very, very good. And the trail counter, we I remember we worked on this before, and maybe it was for Mud Pond and all the other trails and everything, but we were, Melinda was trying to get, get a trail counter, and she took a, a wildlife camera and just put it where somebody's feet go, you know, I'm walking across, and she got People's feet and dogs' feet, and you know, to buy it. Um, but you know, it's for for I know you folks have been trying to get people to sign in, and and it's just it's hard. Yeah. Not everybody's going to sign in, but a trail counter. Yeah. Would definitely be okay. Here's the numbers that people don't have to do anything but walk by mm -hmm. the the device. So. Um. John? We really would want to have a, a more than one, though, just because there are so many access points and ways to come in. It would be hard to put it in the right spot to, to get an accurate count. So that, you know, and multiple uh, multiple counters is, is a common thing um, at, at networks anyway. So, uh, okay. so uh, do, you, uh, do you have like a uh like a link or something like how much do these costs how many do we want like if we're trying to yeah, pass this i out. mean yeah so we can i think we can do a lot of work on it it'd be good to try and put some numbers to it yeah and i think if we're gonna if we're gonna spend the money on trail counters i feel like we should go for pretty good ones yeah um john do you want to do you have information you could send simon on that what you would propose or i think you're the most knowledgeable of us here um, I haven't ever sourced them. They, I always uh, worked with uh, the Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission and Forest Parks and Recreation to get them, but oh. um, I can reach out to those folks and, and ask them what they use. Um, yeah, that'd be great. Okay. All right. I mean, it would be great to know to have a permanent one there, so you could just, you know, have a, a good idea year round what what yeah. the count is of people. Uh, and then, John, what other ideas do you want to contribute? Would you like to share your thoughts too? Um, I think uh, you you hit it with with trail work, um, and uh, and it, that you know that that's certainly something we we should consider. Um, in terms of other stuff, uh, I mean, it, it, this is this is dream world now, right? Is that where we are? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what ARPA is. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I have considered, uh, you know, thinking about uh, a, a magic carpet lift on the sledding hill that could run year round. Um, <laughs> Hans is laughing there. <laughs> uh, and it, and uh, also potentially a, a, a snowmaking loop um, on Goose Hill uh, yeah. that that uh, would allow us to to um host races and and you know be, have a more consistent um experience for for folks who want to come out and ski and, and snowshoe and, and fat bike on actual snow um and as we you know i i mean that one's uh we, we do have uh, some relationships with uh with hkd and some other folks that have actually put together systems like this um on a small small scale um so we have some information to to at least discuss about it
HKD is like a manufacturer company that does snowmaking. I'm sorry. Yeah, they they and they they actually have uh, cross country ski area design systems. So not it wouldn't be like we take something from, from Stowe and put it here. It's it, much yeah. more smaller scale. Um, Doesn't uh, Sleepy Hollow has uh, snowmaking? They do have some snowmaking. I, I I don't know that they have any of the HKD guns. Uh, I think Eli uh, built everything himself. Um, so it, it, it's a different system, but, um, traps and, uh, and Craftsbury both have, uh, HKD guns that, that, uh, and they're super quiet. Um, so it wouldn't, it wouldn't, you know, be like, uh, if you, if you ever remember the, the old style snowmaking guns that would, uh, take your eardrums out, um, they're, they're essentially silent. It's, uh, it's mm -hmm. like a whisper, um, at this point. So you're your source of water would be that pond. Uh, I mean, that really, that really, uh, you know, makes that, sense. That yeah. is, that, that's the one that most makes most sense. But, you know, I mean, there, there are other things, you know, that we need to, I mean, there are things we need to review before we would ever be like, we're going to take water out of there. Lots of things to consider there. And, uh, and, you know, I mean, I, I don't even, I, I don't know the volume of that pond and whether it would, you know, be able to sustain that even, but um, it's, uh, it, it, it's one of the things that we've been talking about, at least thinking about. Okay. Uh, so here, that's our contribution to the list. I guess, Simon, are you gonna? Yeah, I'll, I'll prepare I'll put that. it all together and start generating a document. It's quite okay. a lot there. Um, mm -hmm. And try and get as many numbers things as possible. I think. Yeah, uh, that'd be good. But... Okay, yeah, I'll, good suggestions. There. I'll dig up what we did for the trail signs. Yeah, and then is, is John's going to talk to FBR for the trail counter tools or machines or whatever they are. And then I don't know who quantified the magic carpet and the snowmaking. I like the. Mm -hmm. gonna... I I can do that. That's the. I... I've already I've already done a little bit of research on that because I okay was a okay so send sign in some numbers yeah. you need to have I think I think it'll be easier to get the smaller stuff approved if there's big stuff they can say no to so maybe we should put yeah. bigger stuff <laughs> I thought you were gonna say are you just building? saying it wow I mean we should put it on the list yeah but we need, um, we need a building. Oh, on the well, other side, on the north side, right? So when you, you're not going to be able to use Jim and Lucy's, Jim and Lucy's yeah. place. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that would be huge. <laughs> do, do we want to, like, do we have an overall, this is something that came up last time, but do we have an overall plan for this trail work um, that we're talking about? Or is it just give us 50 grand and we'll spend it on the trails that we think are important? Or... Well, I guess John had had you know ideas on yeah in the uh, up to the lookout yeah the trails are quite advanced if you yeah. could make them more beginner friendly a new, like a new trail or redo some existing John I don't know if that would be the top of list that's what I remember you talking about uh well that was certainly an, an overarching goal that we were looking at uh you know a, a fun way up and a fun way down for everybody. Um, to make the to make the lookout accessible, uh, you know there there are lots of trails that need uh, need updating and, and drainage work uh, after not being able to really work on them for the last four or five years, um, and um, you know I, I think that we should have a, a trail um, potentially cliffs that that is really really friendly and and doesn't have quite as many roots and. And uh, and so it would need it would need some updating on that one too. Not that we would take the roots out, but we would build up over them. Um, and uh, but to make it a really smooth experience, um, and, uh, and 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 certainly drain better. Um, that's another trail that we that we have a lot of drainage problems on that we, we should be addressing. Um, let's see. Uh, I mean, I think the you know the big the big one would be the way up and down from the lookout though. 
Is that like a favorite spot? That's a spot people like to a destination. It's it's yeah. A, I mean, it's it, a it, destination it, you aspire to, but a lot of people just default going to over to the easier trails where we're doing the logging because they're mm -hmm. those trails are more beginner friendly. And then you say, oh, go up to the lookout, and then people start going up. And there's so many roots and rocks. Oh, I think a lot of people mm -hmm. when they're biking get huh. you know turned away and discouraged. And yeah. It's exhausting. I, I tried to take somebody on a on a group ride up the hill, and, you know, young guy. I didn't know I was that much in shape. I don't know if he was out of <laughs> shape, but he could barely get up the hill halfway. Oh, wow. And we turned around and did a different route. I thought, oh, wow. You know. Yeah. So should we, like, should we number these, like, in priority? I was going to say you should probably have some sense of what's priority. Uh, maybe, I mean, there's quite an extensive list there, so maybe we should try and yeah. re review it again on September 14th. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then make sure everyone's, so we just thrown out a huge number of ideas. Yeah. Right. Uh, sort of willing to sign on to it. Okay, so if you, and are you allowed to send us the draft in the middle uh, of the month or no? Not really, no. Not really not. Um, we can, I can, so you'll share the draft. Individually ask you for your comments. Or I line see. carbon copy yeah. maybe and to where we can't all. Right, so we just can't have a discussion about it. Yeah. Yeah. But we could mark it up. And if you send us a copy, we can mark it up and send it back to you. Yep. OK. And if not, then we'll look at it September 14th, everything we talked about today on the list and refine it. And is that time for Eric? So I, I think it will be. OK. <clears throat> you can preview what we've got right now. Yeah. He'll probably have an opinion. Okay, shall we move on then? John, you're up next. We're right on schedule, 619. Or did uh, we, are we going to do the capital budget? Oh, and I know. So that was, was sorry, that? that was just to was suggestions. <laughs> like, if oh, you're struggling to sign the thing, I, perhaps I didn't clarify oh. that. Oh, okay. Uh, I was yeah. going through that going. Okay, I can see why you're starting you're, to work yeah. on that. Oh, <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. Oh, good. Because I did it so. Okay. Yes. So you're on here. Okay. So yeah, John, you're up next. And then. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so uh, our summer camps are finishing up next week. So that will be nine weeks of camp. Um, and uh, we've had a really uh, great summer with uh, with significant uh, growth in the number of kids that we've been able to serve. Um, versus last year. So last year we served uh, 317 and this year we're uh, up over 450 um, and, uh, and really excited to have a bunch of new families come and experience the forest and, uh, and fall in love with it uh, as much as we, we love it. Um, it has been a really hard summer with rain, <laughs> as you all know, and, uh, and, and not just rain, but thunder and lightning too, which brings us inside and, and really is a challenge our thunder spaces um, and the the uh, the lodge space in particular has been uh, has been you know really tight with with kids and um, last Friday actually we had to do our awards inside and it we just ended up having to uh, call them because uh, we just couldn't fit that many people in in the building um, safely and um, so uh, but it, it has been a great summer um, in, in with camps and we've also uh, had a bunch of great clinics, um, including uh, uh, three women's clinics that were, were very well attended. Um, and we're psyched that we've been able to do those despite the bad weather. Um, and just really have been able to stay outside with the campers too um, for, for most of the time, uh, despite what has been really challenging. Um, we did work on our dual slalom um, course and have uh, done a bunch of um, upgrading to that. It really had um, it, it had basically grown over with grass and, and started to erode. Um, so we were, we were psyched to be able to, uh, to upgrade that and, and bring it back to where, um, where it should be. Um, we have had uh, great running race attendance um, this summer, uh, a little bit less with, with biking, but really the weather again has, has uh, challenged our, our race series this summer. Um, and we've had to cancel more than I think we've ever had to cancel. Um, so that, uh, that certainly affected our, uh, our attendance and revenue. Um, let's see, I keep going here. Andy's been working on a bunch of the uh, trail updates too. 
Um, and you'll see his work and, and a little bit of Hans work out there if you're out on the trails. Um, and uh, andy has been mainly working on maintenance stuff, but also uh, getting um, uh, starting on stuff that, that really uh, we, we couldn't do before we could start digging. Now we can um, do those properly. Uh, and the, you know, again, to keep talking about the rain, the drainage systems have been very challenged. And, uh, and so we, we've been working hard to make sure that those are, are working properly. Um, we've been involved in the kids in, um, in the trail maintenance too, and getting them uh, to understand why we do this stuff and how we do it and why it makes sense to, uh, to take care of uh, not just the trails, but the land. Um, a big part of our camping, uh, uh, camping uh, philosophy is leave no trace and uh, respect for the, for the for everybody who lives in it. So um, we do try to uh, keep the environment uh, high uh, up in, in, our, um, in our camps. Um, let's see, we've been working with Jim and Lucy to uh, update our lease with them and uh, which we have uh, are, are in concurrent work with, uh, with the town on um, our revenue and I mean on our um, license agreement and, um, and the temporary event permit process. Um, let's see. That brings us through most of everything that we're working on right now, except for getting ready for the big forestry project. Um, and that uh, we are um, still planning on doing uh, work on uh, balsams and elbow and hopefully three rivers, um, but that our planning process with the uh, wetlands folks and Act 250 have been delayed because we have not been able to get um, all the information we need from the uh, wetlands consultant that we're working with. And uh, they also um, suggested that we really um, consider a master plan for our trail uh, projects, which will require us to um, uh, submit a, a much larger Act 250 and wetlands uh, permit um, application that covers the, the whole forest. Um, the, the board has started to talk about this, um, but really, you know, it, this is a, a much larger process and wanted to uh, bring it to the committee um, and, and, uh, and let you know what we're, um, what we're hoping to get done in that process and, um, and see uh, what the, what you, um, how you might want to be involved too. Um, so, um, that's pretty much it for right now. The camps have really, they really do take up a lot of time and, and effort um, in the summers, but it's, uh, it's our busiest period and it's the chance for us to really um, involve the most folks that we possibly can in, uh, in the forest and, and really bring in um, folks that are gonna be there for the long term. Um, so, thank you. So, so, uh, so the master plan is that the state just feels like it's, a little too much piecemeal that they want to see what you like for the next 10 years or so what your plan yeah, is so uh, uh tina heath is is a, is the wetlands person for chitney county she's she's like the ethan but for wetlands um and uh and and her advice was um you know it's nice that you want to do these projects but um like i've told everybody in the state that i work with or in the county that she works with that, um, that we can't keep doing piecemeal permits. Um, and in particular, she noted Camel Sump Nordic Ski Area um, in, uh, in Huntington that she's like, they, they do this to us every year. They keep asking one, you know, one permit after another and we can't do it. And you know, if you wanna do it for Three Rivers and Balsams and Elbow, she's like, that's fine. But after that, you really should be doing a master plan. Um, so, you know, when, uh, when somebody who is judging permits, um, tells you to do something in a particular way, it's probably a good idea to listen to them. Um, mm -hmm. so, um, I, I think it, it, it does mean that we really need to consider what our master plan is. Now, a master plan doesn't mean that things can't change and we can't adjust things and that we, that we need to 
you know, dial down, you know, to, to such granular detail that, that every little thing we've considered, um, but it does carry some, you know, some larger um, uh, considerations and, and plans uh, that, that look at the network as a whole rather than um, each of these individual projects. And the, the bridges that you guys are working on, that, that's aside, right? From, from the- No, that's uh, unfortunately all wound up, that's, that's wound up in this. Um, we can't really do that work without, without these permits. Um, and uh -huh. uh, so it's, it, 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 you know, we're, we're slowed down in that sense, but um, my experience with going through these, these processes is that um, the projects always end up better when, when you get uh, everybody's input, especially these experts. So um, you know, I'm happy to, uh, you know, to work with them and, and make this as, 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 as good as we can. Are we just talking like uh, improvements to trails here? Is that what she's saying she wants? I don't like, I don't, like the context is, she said you need a master plan because you want to do various improvements to trails or? Um, as opposed to as opposed to uh, a bunch of new trails, is that what you're uh, asking yeah. about? Yeah, we're not doing any new trails, are we? Or... Uh, well, uh, I mean, yeah. I I don't think that we're uh, allowed to do a bunch of new trails uh, right. for the easement, but we can adjust some things and uh, and we can certainly you know uh, improve the ones that that are in the right places, but. Um, I, I, I think we're we're much more looking at uh, adjusting trails and and um, and making them uh, better rather than looking at a bunch of new trails. All right. Okay. Okay. Thanks, John. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for the update. I, I follow you on his, on Instagram, so it's like every week it's thunderstorms. The race yeah. cancelled. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. Well, crazy. Did you do something about that, Simon? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, I guess you're out of the forestry yeah. You're, the you're from England. This, this is like nothing, right? <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's, it's, more, not, it's more drizzle. Yeah. Drizzle, that's yeah. true. It's yeah. not this it's crazy. Like, yeah. You don't get storms like, like you get over here. Yeah. Um, or deluges. <laughs> like last month. <laughs> okay. Um, then we'll move on to other business. And we have our standing agenda items there to go over the town forest events to see what events uh, are going to be added to the calendar. And this is kind of our funnel. This is our new funnel. Uh, to yeah, so we thought we, I guess last time we met, we talked about maybe giving this a try. Yeah. And um, see if we can like, reduce the burden on everyone involved. So we put together this spreadsheet. Um, open to comments about uh, what it contains. So the first four are the events that I think Ethan organised direct with the Outdoor Family Centre. So I sort of just put those down uh, as already done. Mm -hmm. um, we've got a couple more, only one mm -hmm. that really has a confirmed date. So that's um, walking the forest management area post cut on October 21st. Um, so that would be pretty much the same event just after the um, after the forestry project has happened. So around 25 people in the afternoon, uh, October 21st in the area of the um, in the area of the forest management project. And is that open to the public or is it? Uh, it would it'd be like Ethan's regular events. Yeah, okay. Uh, so I guess the idea here is that John, we'd have you'd have a chance to see if anything conflicts on the Outdoor Family Center calendar and if this works for the Outdoor Family Center. Yeah. So I mean, I I just looked at the online calendar. I know you yeah. don't generally do much on, and it avoids the Halloween. So, um, yeah. Um, uh, and then after. Yeah, go ahead. So I, I believe that we do potentially have uh, something on the 20, I think we, we settled on the 22nd for, um, yeah, Sunday. So that that will uh, likely be the uh, spectacular with, uh, yeah, 
with uh, the Fellowship of the Wheel. So um, we don't have anything on that Saturday, but we do have something on Sunday. So that's a little bit early because we were looking about the invasive and we thought it was closer to Halloween. Um, a, a last, we, yeah, last year we did it uh, that weekend too. Um, and when we spoke right. with Adam from Fellowship of the Wheel, he had already started promoting that date. So we, we, we stuck with it. Um, and, uh, okay. So um, that's why that one's on. But uh, right now, th th that should, th there shouldn't be any overlap with Ethan's event. Okay, cool. Do you, um, uh, do you have space? We'd like to do some town plan stuff, maybe spectacular might be good. Then you try to chip a small little uh easel and table we'd set up just to talk to people about the town plan 2015 for that. just put now I'll, I'll email you separately john see whether that's something we can do um yeah, no with, problem you guys are always welcome at our events yeah okay uh good so i guess i'm really thought this through what we're doing now but like this 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 schedule should always be available people should have to click it yeah, so yeah, okay. maybe like in the way that we try and check your calendar, you can just check check this. Or does that work? Do you want me to send you an email saying this has been agreed? Or I mean, maybe if you add like a column, uh, if we you should make it so we can't edit. But um, I think like if there's a column that says like a group confirmed at you know August CCF, mm -hmm. and then John. You know, the next step is that this would need to get on to the calendar. Yeah. Right. Do we have a time on, on that one? Yeah, one one till three. Okay. And so the invasive day we were trying to find a, a time and Laura's working with the scouts. So we're gonna try to figure out something. I mean, we can start doing it at any time actually. So it could be September or October. So it doesn't have to be in November. So that was her first thought. So, but we'll, you know, do it. What what is it? A 30 day, 30 day. Uh, kind of yeah, I think I mean each notice. Yeah, because I think I I put that because I know Laura doesn't have a date yet. Right. So I'll put it on to discuss next time. Yep. So um, she's aware that of this new system. So. yeah. Uh, and then I guess maybe if, if the spectacular is not on the weekend of the 28th, maybe that's back on the oh, back on the table. Yeah. Right. So um, I can put that out for her. So yeah, because yeah. she was trying to avoid the 28th. So she was going to do it. We're, we were looking at that, but I can yeah. throw that back out to her. Okay. Uh, and then there'll be plenty of time then for next month for us to confirm that date with John and then get it onto the calendar. Yeah. Uh, and I guess that's the only you know, downside of us funneling everything through the committee here that you have to wait. So I, I don't know. Well, maybe it's manageable. And in this case, maybe we'll just see how it goes. Yeah, I, I don't know the best way to do this. So I'm, we'll try this. If it's not yeah. work, we'll figure out something else. And um, and of course, I mean, the, the one thing too is that after the logging operation happens, it's going to be so much less. I mean, there really is. Yeah, you know, and then for us, us, it's just the spring, the spring yeah. with the birding, and but uh, and yeah, yeah. So it's really going to it, unless Ethan's doing a logging operation, you know, the spec, the events outside of the outdoor center will be a lot fewer. So the library, though, the library actually has been doing a holding some events at Catamount. So that's oh yeah, yeah right. great. Yeah. Uh, two quick questions, Simon. Yeah. Um, could we, could we add a column for uh, for certificate of insurance to to help people uh, um, have have a reminder to uh, that that that's part of um, hosting with us. And and again, we're happy to have a, a you know one a year with with uh, with the crew so that we don't have to go uh, and do this every time, but just yeah. that we that we do. Uh, our diligence there and, and, and get that um, get that taken care of. Okay. And the volunteers. And then, uh, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. 
did you have a question, Terry? No, I was, I was just saying that the, the volunteer invasive day would be covered by the town, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, and then uh, the, the road crew guys parked their excavator in the lot today, um, which is totally fine. We don't have any, you know, overlaps or anything, but they didn't say a word to us. They just parked it and walked away. Um, so so which cons? Uh, I'm not sure who it was. I mean, that's what I'm saying. It's like nobody said anything. They just parked it and, and, and left. Um, they're, and they're, I, they're digging trench drainage down near Giovanna Lane. If you go yeah. farther down, mm -hmm. I saw them digging there. Yeah. I imagine that was a machine that they just left. Yeah, it's, the, it's, the wheeled, it's the wheeled Volvo. The really nice one that I that I lust oh. after. <laughs> you want to leave the keys? The keys in it. I was just. just <laughs> That's all right. I if if I it, all the cat uh, all the Volvo keys are the same. All the cat keys are the same. If I just had a Volvo key, I'd be out there right now, and you wouldn't even see me. <laughs> <laughs> Never know. <laughs> uh, is, and that's Willis in town works. I imagine. I don't know. Is yes, that oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. sure. the town crew. Uh, yeah. I don't know, I guess it's town property. I mean, it's give them a parking yeah. ticket. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that'd go over well with Bruce. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Especially yeah. when you get to your gate, you have a big pile. Yeah, you get to go on the park. The, the town does. Okay, um, that's on the calendar. So we move on now. Uh, the other one was it's not an event, um, but I think yeah. Terry, Ethan, and um, two of our board members, Laura and Chapin, uh, we're going to do some invasive treatment on August the 24th. Uh, and while, while it's not an event, um, I think Terry sent an email a while ago, but we just want to make sure that's on uh, people's radar so they know that it's. It's happening, I think. Ethan was talking about doing it. Or was he talking about doing it, Terry? Yep, the northwest uh, corner. On, on Woods Trace. Yep. So we'll nail that down and, and definitely let you know exactly where we're going to be. And uh, But we're trying to work on the, uh, the, we're trying to actually get Laura and Chapin trained because they're licensed applicators. For herbicides, and so they were not comfortable um, spraying. They were comfortable doing the cut stuff, but they really didn't have any experience actually spraying foliar. So I kind of organized. Got, Ethan said he would be more than happy to work with them and show them how to do that. So is that for the barberry? The bar, yeah, Japanese barberry. Yeah, that's where I was going. So that's what we're going to focus on. So. And it's it's going to be in the woods, but we should, you know, we'll have yeah. tape it off, you know, tape it off and have a notice there. And you guys can put that on your your website. Uh, trail conditions, I guess, would, would be the place you would put it. So, John, uh, our process here would be that you say if that date's fine, and then we put a checkbox on the spreadsheet and say if that's good. Um, and that that's I, I have access to that spreadsheet. Uh, well, our, our idea was that we would do it right now. I don't know. If that's okay. possible. This, this is this is on the spreadsheet. Yeah. It's not an event. It's a yeah. Yeah. town doing some invasive work right there. Um, yeah. But is it in the interest a CBD of, one, is that what we're talking uh, about? Uh, it's it's the sense. one above that. Well, the A twenty nine one. Yeah. Um, no, eight eight twenty four. So it's the same day. You're so that's a Thursday dual slalom on that side of the road, and then this is over on Woods Trace. Is it okay to go out and spray? So it'll be eight thirty in the morning till eleven. Uh, so I think that's when right. is. Yeah. Right. So okay. So with your verbal approval, Simon will put a check that says we discussed this and agreed upon the date. Yeah, and I I put the uh, ten twenty one on on our calendar now too, so we know about that one. Okay. Well, like on the website calendar already. I I well I put it on uh, on our internal calendar, so Amanda and I oh, can see. Uh -huh. Got it. Got it. Okay, right. and uh, we're good then on, on events. Sorry. 
I think so. Uh, Ethan did say he's planning on doing another forest management walk at some point in October um, with a different group. Uh, um, I don't have any detail on that yet, so we'll have okay. to figure it out in the next meeting. Okay. All right. Success. Um, now the other standing item was invasives update. Uh, so, I guess we talked about. We did talk about one invasive. Right. Yeah. And I did a couple of, I did had three uh, invasive work days with, yeah, one person, two people, three people uh, for the poison parsnip. Mm -hmm. And so that we really amazingly made, there were three of us one day and we got out there with our parsnip predator shovels and really made a big dent. Um, and then we went out, I went out with Jim McCulloch one day and over near where you know, his event's a little space and took care of a lot of it over there because it's just, it's spreading. You know, it's just the ones that are there are just going to keep going. So that was great. And then I did another day with a, uh, somebody from the bottle and, um, you know, when we were doing that. So that's really, I mean, I think Je Jim has a shovel now, so he's going to go out there. And last I knew, <laughs> before yeah. I went away, he was going to continue to go out there and, and tackle it with some other folks. And then I guess just a quick note about, so this, we did last year put in for um, a $3,000 uh, use of the stewardship fund for invasives after the logging operation. And that will be a professional uh, hire. And that'll probably be the same guy that uh, Ethan's been working with. His name is Bill or Bob. Um, but yeah, so. And yeah. I think that's right now what, uh, you know, this this is the season. I think it goes to like December. So he's got a little window that he can get in. Good. Uh, we had uh, Velco. Isn't Velco doing their thing? Oh, yeah. They're supposed to be, we so twisted their four. arm and said, you're going to spray our invasives too, right? Right. Uh, so, who? Yeah, so I think they're planning on tying it in with, Ethan, with Ethan's forest management work. Uh -huh. um, so sometime in September, oh, uh, they'd be looking to do that. And and the town is managing that, like twisting Velcro's arm to do that in the uh, spring. I mean, the lady that visited Yeah, they've, walked they've said they'd like nice. do it. Um, uh -huh. And I think it's part of their um, We're Nice Guys mm -hmm. yeah. program. <clears throat> Uh, <laughs> I guess like we probably need to have a discussion about like uh, closing some of the trails on the day they do it. Yeah. Um, but it actually might. Oh, that's true. Some of those trails might still be open. Yeah. Um, when With they get course, up further yeah, up towards the. Yeah. yeah. And I think. Are okay. you still planning on John? Are you still planning on redoing the power lines trail at some point? Yes, and we we I've been in touch with Velco to discuss what uh, what's possible because they they have a pretty strong uh, requirements of what can and can't happen underneath their power line. So, um, right. but we we do want to we want to we want to refresh the trail that was there uh, at some point, and uh, and we're, we're in discussions with them about it. And okay. and you know the if. Uh, if all we're doing is refreshing a trail that used to be there, we shouldn't have to do Act 250 permits. We're not in a wetland, so we wouldn't have to worry about that. Um, and uh, and so we, we could potentially do it this year, but need to really be clear with Velco what we're planning and and uh, make sure that they don't just come and tear it down again really quickly because they need to do something. Mm -hmm. So where was the trail? Was it on the north side of the power line? uh mm -hmm. yeah mostly on the north side yeah yeah mm -hmm. and then uh, they were surprised to hear that uh or they were surprised to find out that we didn't have a real easement with them um the only easement that we have currently is is the one from the 50s which does not describe the trails at all um and i said we have uh nine crossing <laughs> and they were like oh maybe we should get those <laughs> notified <laughs> we have some, we have some work to do with them mm -hmm. Okay, good. Thanks, John. Uh, is that it for agenda? Uh, future agenda. So oh. the next meeting is September 14th. Um, I booked with Matt 
Bill and Jay to come and talk about what right. is the 2050 town plan, um, what you guys think we should uh, be including in that. That sort of sets the agenda for at least the next eight years, but with a view to 2050. Um, he was at Energy last night and he's been to yes. conservation. Um, so that'll probably be a reasonably lengthy discussion. Um, we might want to talk about the, the ARPA list and maybe also review the budget. So um, I guess not to dictate your agenda to you, but that's already quite a lot for one meeting. <laughs> it took yeah. us almost an hour last And then we have our standing with Matt. Yeah. yeah. And we'll have our standing items then, of course. Yeah. So between that and the COFC, yeah, and the COFC yeah. update, the other business. And when when do we actually start working on the budget? I can't remember. Let's see. Uh, so they start, I think the select board starts figuring it out in like mid December. Um, so, and then they hold hearings on in January. So we have to be, I have a proposed, this is for fiscal year 25. Right. right? So, so they're, they're probably just going to give us, well, they always give us, um, <laughs> unless we like advocate, <laughs> which I think is what we wanted yeah. to do last time. Right. And we, yeah, so, so that would be. And then, so when we have the budget uh, agenda item for next week, is it, are we going to open up the budget and look at it and start discussing it? Or are we expected to come back with like a revised? Uh, we can look at what we spent last year. Mm -hmm. Okay. So there's no pre work, I guess I'm trying to get No, you don't have to do quite enough to do with the office uh, one. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. So we'll come ready to look at the budget and start thinking. And listen to Matt and review the ARPA list. Um, I know it's not due to the end of the year, but we already started it with energy. It's writing our annual report. Yeah. Yeah. Before you forget what you did in the last year, which ended June 30th. Um, so it's a one page summary of who we are and what we've done in the last 12 months. And, um, and you always have to think that you don't want to say, you know, by the time you publish it, the forestry management project will be done. But right now we're still approaching it because it didn't get done by June 30th. So mm -hmm. you think about what happened from July 1 last year to June 30th this year. And um, mm -hmm. so. Quite so a bit, actually. With yeah, all quite a bit. So talks. you think of all the stuff that's gone on. But, but yeah. then when it gets published in the town report, you only end up with, <coughs> you know, at best an eight and a half by 11 page. So mm -hmm. you get a lot. So it's by, it's until June. June, but it's past, it's past June, yes. so you have to that's, recreate it. Yeah, yeah, go, go back to everything that's there. Yeah. It's a duty of the chair. Well, it's a duty of the person that was chair during that time. <laughs> your, your first well, big project. Well, again, from the energy, I drafted it, and then yeah. I had, we had it out, and everybody critiques and adds that right. to it. I'll read yeah. last year's. Yeah. Simon's got a good handle on that. <laughs> what do, do you write it or do I write it? Uh, I think I voted last year mm -hmm. because I thought it'd be a good exercise for me to figure out what you guys did in the preceding year. Yeah. Uh, and I probably didn't want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> so, hey, you did a much better job okay. than I could. Uh, good reminder, Reed. Thank you for that. Yeah, thank you. Thanks. Okay, that, that's our future agenda. I think we're only up to yeah. now adjourn. So, can we get a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Thank you, Reed. I second. Thank you, Terry. All in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> All opposed? Nobody? So we are adjourned at 6.50 p.m. Mm -hmm. Right. Good job.